Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm Zia Scaraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at CES 2024 in Las Vegas, and I'm here with one of my favorite people. Katie Lindahl, you are uh, really a, a, an expert in all things consumer tech, right? <laughs> I've been in consumer technology for, my goodness, since, well, a lifetime, but professionally, background is in IT, and then on air covering consumer technology since 2006, seven. Yeah, and yeah. what number CES is for you? I think I counted and it was 15. I'm That's like embarrassed. I was like, I get a geriatric badge. <laughs> <laughs> I literally heard they changed the color after so many years. So I'm like, oh gosh. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that, that's a long history with the show. Yes. What, what, what have you thought of the show so far? It's oh massive. my goodness. Every year, I think like, you know, you start to do your homework, you do your research and find out the themes. And I am always on the hunt for the most practical, but like kind of the underdogs. As well as like, of course, the grandiose and the things that are getting attention. Equal parts of balance. This year was incredible. I found a lot of gems. Excited to go back and put them on TV. And yeah, every year I get pumped. I'm a nerd. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, well, I like, I like your TV pieces. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, now, you were here with Mercedes. Yes. And so uh, I want to talk about automotive a bit because the automotive pavilion was massive this mm -hmm. year. But what, what were you doing with Mercedes? What did they announce? I love Mercedes. This is my fourth year working with Mercedes. And we had such a huge unveil on so many different air avenues from just AI and vehicle and the future and the vision of infotainment and also just where Mercedes is going. And then probably the biggest announcement on the show floor was in partnership with Will I Am in Sound Drive and having this revolutionary new way that you drive and listen to music where you're almost like having your own personal DJ, depending on the routes that you're taking, the moves that you're making in vehicle, the music will change. Never huh. been done before. And, you know, paraphrasing Will's words, but it's wild that we're here in 2024 and something like this hasn't been done. And we had such a dynamic conversation on stage with Marcus Schaefer, Mercedes CTO, who's incredible and such a visionary with Will about how, you know, the, the time is now and this is gonna transform the way that people drive and listen to music. So it was, it was really incredible, obviously my highlight of my CES this year. Yeah, well, the reason it hadn't been done before is frankly, from the year in the cars were invented to about 20 years ago, maybe 10 years ago, there was no innovation in cars. Right. It was yeah. just it was lowering cost. It was it was making components cheaper, things like that. But there really was no innovation to how cat cars ran. Right. And, and even you and I were talking about it. There's so many innovations to cover. But even the OTA, just to have the software updates yeah. in vehicle and something that Mercedes was, was highlighting. It's incredible because you're constant. You don't have to buy a new purchase, a new car. Yeah. So love even the little things like that. And so think of the implications of that, right? Before, if you needed a new feature in a car, you either had to buy a new car mm -hmm. or you had to bring the car into the dealership. Pain in the butt. And they kept it for a couple of days. They uploaded new software. Now you turn the car on and the features are there. It's incredible. It's, it's like magic, right? And so these cars aren't really cars anymore, right? They're, they're actually moving computers. That, that, that just happened to take you places. Well, and to your point yeah. too, we were speaking about how CES has become just almost like its own auto show. Yeah. And this is the place to be, you know, it started, we, we got to watch the evolution of that over the years and the in-vehicle technology has just become larger and larger. And, and, and as a car manufacturer, this is the place to be. And I do think the innovation is gonna speed up too. I was over at the Amazon stand inside the automotive area and it, that was one massive booth as well. And uh, what they've, done is because you know they're the king of cloud a lot of the onboard computers that are used as part of the car systems they virtualize they put in the cloud mm -hmm. so now as a car manufacturer you can start building new features and and testing the systems in a car that won't be released for two years Correct. so when the car is released it's got all these new capabilities and so the the, the just that whole value chain and the, the rate of innovation is speeding up. And just hit on that for a second too, because just for the, had the firsthand experience with Mercedes, just their partnership with Google, who's updating their maps 50 yeah. million times a day, and the navigation and the beauty of using Unity Engine, and it's just so amazing in car, but also the partner with Amazon to have now this audible experience come to light with storytelling in vehicle. Yeah. They're using- Plus Alexa high, in vehicle too. Plus Alexa, I mean, yeah. it's like, well now Mercedes has Mercedes Virtual Assistant, which is coming, which will be the way of the future. It's like you talking to a friend in car and it responds knowing your tone it's wild and exciting yeah. the best thing too i think the car manufacturers done it, is they've stopped trying to reinvent the wheel it's Pun a, intended yeah <laughs> where uh, uh before uh you could use carplay or you could use an apple capability or something but the manufacturer made their own and it was never as good as the consumer ones and so now they're integrating those in them right instead of you know you, know, you talked about you know integration with alexa things like that instead of building your own assistant 
you know, use the ones that are already there. So I think. Well, you got to see Mercedes virtual yeah. assistant. You're going to be blown away. We have to get you inside there. All right. Because you're going to be just amazed. Okay, I'll take you up on that. Okay. Yeah. What else did you see that you like? I, I think one of the things that I liked was, and I know you're a big advocate of assistive technology, handicap people, and uh, there is. I, I think we've seen more innovation in that area uh, than I've seen, well, maybe ever, right? But technology can help people that are handicapped or, you know, do more things in their life, right? Tech for good, you know, one of my favorites, just to give a specific example, was Xander Glasses that allows you to, if you're uh, having trouble hearing, you can actually put the glasses on and it has AR closed captions right in front of your face. Practical technologies that you're like, oh my goodness, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. They can be immediately accessed in everyday use for people that are having setbacks. Yeah. And there's actually other implications of that too. I've got a set of cycling glasses with a heads-up display. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, so I don't have to like look down at the computer anymore. Uh, one of the ones I saw though was for blind people. Uh, it's a little clip-on to your glasses, and it'll actually tell you. It'll scan everything in front of you and tell you what's there. If you walk in a room, it'll say there's a table three feet in front of you. There's a pl you can ask it what's on the table. Say a plant in you know in a vase. There's uh, four oranges in a bowl, and oh. it'll tell you what's there. But it'll also read text for you. So now if you're at work and you get an email, you can ask it to read you the email or summarize the email. What is this email about? It's a year-end summary from the company. Read me the budget clause. We are adopting a meticulous budgetary framework for the next fiscal year. So in a lot of ways, that assistive technology gives, uh, uh, you know, creates a, almost an advantage now yes. uh, by, you know, through tech, and which is really the way it should be. Yeah. And the hearing aid technologies yeah. over the years have blown my mind. It's just been so cool. And that's something, you know, what, 10 years ago, you think you have to go into the doctor, you have to get special molds. Now they're just prevalent. Yeah. And uh, so the last topic let's talk about, which we have to, is AI. Oh my gosh. Right? This was dubbed as the AI show. It's and it is. Yeah. It is. And uh, AI everywhere. AI I hope you're everywhere. not sick of it. it, it <laughs> everywhere, in and everything. And uh, let me ask you, have we overdone AI? Diluted it. It's to the point where it doesn't mean anything anymore, right? My goodness. You know, when I saw a pair, and I won't put the brand on blast because that's not my style, but when I saw a pair of, let's call them shoes, that were alluding to how the AI... Oh, it, I saw it, those. You know, <laughs> you just, that's not the talking point. Like, I think there's so many... There's so much consumer technology that we've we has AI built into it and baked into it for for so long, but we're just using it as language because that's what's hot right now, yeah. and it's just become so overdone. And I think people, I think the consumer is sick of hearing about it. I think there's really cool applications of it, no doubt. Don't get me wrong, I, I, we know that, but it's just it's in everything, everything. Yeah. But I will say, I saw an AI backpack. This was one of my favorite picks <laughs> of the show because I love the the high tech to the to the consumer tech to the wacky tech. And I saw this AI backpack. It was a generative AI. You can t tell it. We, we told it to put a gorilla and a guitar. And you can pick any image and it pushes it to the backpack. LED. You wear it around. And I was like, immediately. In a matter of seconds. Like, how cool is that? So I'm not knocking that AI is in everything. But I'm like, yeah, we've overdone it. Yeah. I did see one company, too. They make a, it's actually a band for your Apple Watch. And it's got a bunch of sensors on the wrist. Oh. Now, it's used... Uh, Doesn't the Apple Watch have a bunch of sensors on the wrist? <laughs> it, well, it's got it on the other side of the wrist. Oh, okay, but, got it. But this is used, um, uh, you know, to help you control Apple devices, you know, through, um, uh, you know, through hand gestures. Oh. Right? But huh. they do capture a lot of other... Like, they can tell when you pick up a device how heavy it is by how hard you're, how hard you're gripping it. And, and there's some really cool sports implications in that. Like, you know, in your golf swing... Um, you could actually track all your good swings and bad swings and it tells you your grip pressure too strong or you're swinging too fast. Interesting. Yeah, so the, and it's got an accelerometer built into it. And it, what it does is it measures, uh, I'm not sure how it does this, but through your wrist, it can actually measure intent. And so it knows if you're like intending to pick up something. So they talked about a person that lost his fingers and the, the, the simulated motion of doing that, it can still measure it from the wrist. So you wow. don't actually have to like close your fingers to know that it's, you're, you want to close your fingers. And so that's something, again, you think of people in wheelchairs and you know, you maybe don't have full use of their hands. Yes, they assistive can just, technology. Yes. I see where you're going yeah, with it. That's yeah. cool. So there's a lot of really interesting stuff coming. So One of the last things, too, we could go back and forth for hours of just favorites, yeah. but just earbuds that monitor with 99.9% .9 accuracy your, your heart rhythm. So if anybody has any... Oh, that's interesting. Issues with, I'm like, wow, I never thought to think go, to go through your, your ear canals to get yeah. that kind of data. But, and then there, of course, there's like a, a monitoring system so you can track your information over time. Mind blowing. Yeah. And I did go to the HyperX gaming event last night too. And 
we don't talk about I was about surprised gaming. you were a gamer. Yeah, yeah. We were chatting and, about this. And uh, there's a lot of really interesting stuff coming. Just the, the ability to drop GPUs now at low cost into $2,000 devices and things like that is yes. unbelievable because so much of the stuff now can be done on device. And so you think of um, the ability to interact with games through a natural language, right? Mm -hmm. the, and uh, uh, even be able to create custom content, uh, things like that. It's all being done, uh, primarily done in the cloud today. Mm -hmm. Once we drive more GPUs down, you know, more NVIDIA chips down to local devices, you put more content creation capabilities in people's hands no matter where they are. And that's that's really good for everybody. And so you think of it even from a business implications, you know, creative teams, they take a long time to get sales and marketing people content sometimes because they're doing it all by hand. Yes. Now if you can just ask it to create me an image of a, you know, a Cadillac on a beach, you know, in, uh, in the summertime, it can do that in a matter of, Second. Did you see my, my digital Christmas card? We used I generative did. AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was, was in like really a, a really low, this boring field, yeah. but then I wasn't. Yeah, <laughs> you know, use a little DaVinci, use a little Photoshop. You can make anything happen. Yeah, you're in front of the church and stuff. Yes. So, yeah. It was all cool. Right. All right, Katie. Well, uh, as You're always, one of my favorite people. Well, you're one of my favorite people, too. So thanks for joining me. <laughs> of course. Yeah. And so on behalf of Katie Lillendahl, I'm Zias Caravalla, live from CES 2024. Thank you all for joining us.